So the title of this video is actually a lie. Dinosaurs probably didn't pee. They probably did what reptiles and birds do today and just expel liquid poop. So whenever I say pee in this video, I'm referring to any bodily fluid from a dinosaur. As long as it was water molecules that was at one point inside of a dinosaur in any way, that is what I'm going to be calling pee in this video. And yes, this is how I willingly chose to spend my time. Hello there folks and welcome to Inquirity. So the other day I was thinking of possible video ideas when I remembered in elementary school how sometimes a kid would say, You know the water you're drinking is like 50% dinosaur pee, right? Why they always brought this up while I was drinking water is a mystery to me. But I thought this could be an interesting video topic about what percentage of the water we drink was at one point inside of a dinosaur. So pause the video and go get a nice cool glass of water before we find out how much of it used to be inside of a dinosaur. I personally don't think it's going to be anywhere near 50%, but let's see. Now the first thing we need to do to tackle this project is to simplify the problem to better understand it. Instead of thinking how much dinosaur pee is in all the water of the world, we can instead try to turn this into a sort of game. Let's say there's a bag of marbles. This represents all of the water in the world. You start with the bag full of blue marbles. The blue marbles represent water that has never been dinosaur pee. Every turn of the game, you take out a certain number of marbles from the bag. This represents the amount of water every dinosaur in the world would drink in a day. Since we defined P as any water that was inside of a dinosaur's body, we can assume that the amount of water that goes into a dinosaur's body is the same amount of water that eventually leaves a dinosaur's body. Which brings us to the next step. You replace all the marbles you took out of the bag with yellow marbles. Yellow marbles are going to represent water that has been dinosaur P at any point. And pulling out a yellow marble just means you put a yellow marble back. If the water a dino drinks was once pee, then nothing really changes for the water. It's still dino pee. There's no super pee or anything. My first instinct was to do a Google search for an equation to model this game. Then we could just use that equation to help us solve this problem. But alas, I did not find anything online. I even tried watching all the Khan Academy videos on dependent statistics, but came out with nothing that modeled this marble game. So I had one of three options for this project. Give up and do an easier project keep searching through the sea of third grade statistics problems that use marble as a keyword, or try to create my own equation. I wanted to challenge myself, so I decided to try and make my own equation. This is how I knew this was going to be a fun topic. To find an equation to model this game, I needed to calculate the probability of getting a yellow marble after each turn. I started with numbers that I thought would be easy to work with. The bag starts off with 10 blue marbles, and one marble is pulled out each turn. Piece of cake, one and 10 are just about the easiest numbers to work with, and that'll make it easier to find a pattern. In this game, there is a 100% chance that the marble we pull out on our first turn will be blue. So after the first turn, we will be left with 9 blue marbles and 1 yellow marble. So now there's a 10% chance of getting a marble that was once dinosaur pee. And if by some chance you were disappointed by how easy that was, then you need not worry for too long. For our second turn, we have to branch off into two possible outcomes, pulling out 1 yellow marble and pulling out 1 blue marble. There's a 1 in 10 chance that we'll get a yellow marble. If that happens, we'd still be left with a 10% chance of pulling out a yellow marble but there's also a 9 in 10 chance that we'll pull out a blue marble and put back a yellow marble. If that happens, there'd be a 20% chance of pulling out a pea marble. And now what? Do we just go with the 20% because it's the more likely outcome? Well, we can't ignore the 1 in 10 chance that we'd pull out the same yellow marble twice in a row. It's still a statistically possible outcome that we can't ignore. So we have to apply a weighted average to these two possibilities. There's a 1 in 10 chance that we'll be left with a 10% chance of getting P, and a 9 in 10 chance that we'll be left with a 20% chance of getting P. So we need to add 1 10 and 9 20s together, then divide the whole total by 10 to get the weighted average of 19%. And this gets a lot more complicated after every turn. After our third turn, the branch with a 20% chance of getting a P marble branches off into two more possibilities. A 2 in 10 chance of getting a yellow marble and being left with a 20% chance of getting a P marble, and an 8 in 10 chance of getting a blue marble and being left with a 30% chance of getting a P marble. The weighted average of these two possibilities is 28%. Then you have to do the weighted average from the other branch that had a 10% chance of pulling out a P marble. You divide that into two branches and get a weighted average of 19%. But then you have to do another weighted average between these two weighted averages because there's the initial 1 in 10 chance leading to this 19% and the 9 in 10 chance leading to this 28%. After doing the math, the weighted average after 3 turns is a 27.1% chance of pulling out a P marble. So if we kept doing calculations like this, we'd have to keep doing weighted averages for all the newer branches and then work our way up and do all the weighted averages with all the older branches. And this is an easy example, because if we pulled out two marbles each turn, we'd have to branch off into three possibilities each turn instead of two. And if we pulled out three marbles, we'd have to branch off into four possibilities, and so on. And this is why we really need an equation, because we've got some really big numbers coming up. And thankfully, I did come up with an equation. 
Looking back at our example with 10 marbles and pulling out one marble each turn, we start with a 0% chance of getting a P marble. After the first turn, there's a 10% chance of getting a P marble. Then after the second turn, there's a 19% chance of getting a P marble, then a 27.1% chance, and then a 34.39% chance. We need to find a pattern with these numbers. To get from 0 to 10, first we add 10, then we add 9, then we add 8.1, then 7.29. Or you could rewrite these numbers as 10 times 0.9 to the 0 power, 10 times 0.9 to the 1st power, 10 times 0.9 to the 2nd power, and 10 times 0.9 to the 3rd power. So based on this pattern, we would add 10 times 0.9 to the 4th power to 34.39 to get the next number in the sequence. So the next number should be 40.951. And it is. I tested this pattern out with different numbers of starting marbles and different numbers of marbles you pull out each turn to get the equation that models this game. In a bag starting off with Q blue marbles, where each turn you take out P marbles at random and replace them with yellow marbles, to find the probability of getting a yellow marble after X number of turns, you would take the sum from N equals 0 to X minus 1 of 100 P over Q multiplied by Q minus P over Q to the nth power. This symbol here is a lesser known math symbol, so let me just go over it real quick. It's called sigma, and basically it says, take this stuff right here and add it over and over again, but replace n with all the numbers between the number at the bottom to the number at the top. So in this example, we take our equation and replace n with 0 because that's our starting point. Then we'd add the equation again, but replace n with 1. Then again replacing n with 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and so on until we get to replace n with x minus 1, our ending point. And I don't know if this exact equation has a name or not, but if it doesn't, then I call dibs on naming it the Dinosaur P Summation Equation, or Dipsy for short. Now with Dipsy, we can start filling in numbers to find out what percentage of water is Dinosaur P. Let's say each marble represents one liter of water, so Q is going to equal all the water in the world, approximately 1 sextillion 260 quintillion liters of water. Then let's say each turn is one day, Dinosaurs lived in the Mesozoic era, which lasted for 186 million years. To get how many days this is, we multiply this by 365.25, accounting for a leap year of course, to get 67,936,500,000 days. So the upper limit of our sum is going to be 67,936,499,999 days. And the last number we need to get this equation working is, funny enough, p. Now variable p has some restrictions. P needs to be a constant value, so it needs to be the average liters of water that all dinosaurs drank daily over this 186 million year period. Now let me just say, I am amazed at how much we still don't know about dinosaurs. I couldn't find anything about dinosaur population or how much water dinosaurs drank. So what do we do? To continue this project, we need to know how much water dinosaurs drank in a day. For the purpose of having numbers to work with, I'm going to treat the entire dinosaur population like a scaled up version of the modern bird population. Literally. And before you call foul on this method, hear me out. This project is not about dinosaur population or how much water dinosaurs drank. This project is about estimating what percentage of water is dinosaur pee. Yes, I would love to have the most accurate numbers possible, but if that's not available, I want to use the information that I can find to get the best estimates I can. That's why I want to find information about birds and scale that up to dinosaur level. And why birds instead of reptiles? Well, there's a lot of evidence to support that many dinosaurs were more closely related to birds than reptiles. First, let's try to estimate how much water each individual dinosaur drank. I thought a good way to do this would be to first find the average weight of birds, scale that up to dinosaur level, then see how much birds drink based on that weight. The average weight of birds is the total mass of birds divided by the total number of birds, both of which are numbers that people have conveniently estimated. According to the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, or PNAS, anyways, the total mass of all wild birds is about 0.002 GTC, and GTC stands for gigatons of carbon. It's the weight of just all the carbon in all birds. Carbon usually makes up about one-fifth of an organism's mass, so we can multiply this value by 5 to say that the total weight of every bird in the world is about one hundredth of a gigaton, or 10 billion kilograms. Then according to research done by ornithologist Anna-Luz Porzykonski, there are between 200 to 400 billion birds in the world. Since the bird population is on a sharp decline, I think we should go with a lower number on this range. 250 billion would probably be a safe number to go with. So 10 billion kilograms of birds divided by 250 billion birds gives us an average bird weight of 0.04 kilograms. Huh. I expected that to be a bit higher. I mean, there's a lot of large birds out there. There's ostriches, eagles, condors. But then again, this is a pretty common weight for birds. Plus, it's probably easier for smaller birds to reproduce than larger birds, which could explain why the average per bird is so low. So I guess it does make sense. 
Now the largest bird alive today, based on weight, is the ostrich, which weighs about 104 kilograms on average. The average bird weight is 1 2,600th of this weight. Scaling this up to dinosaurs, the largest dinosaur that we know of was the Argentinosaurus, which weighed about 73,000 kilograms on average. 1 2,600th of this weight is 28.077 kilograms. So this is going to be our average weight for all dinosaurs. Next, we need to know how much water a 28 kilogram bird drinks in a day. Now for this part, I had to look at how much water the domestic turkey drinks, and here's why. A domestic turkey only weighs about 11 kilograms on average, not even half of the 28 kilograms we're looking for. But this was the largest bird I could find that had research done for exactly how much water they drink. It's probably because turkeys are farm animals. There's not that much benefit from knowing exactly how much water a rhea or emperor penguin drinks in a day, but there's a lot of benefits to farmers who need to know how much water to invest in for their animals. So while the turkey isn't a perfect specimen to use, it's the closest bird that gives us the numbers that we can work with. 1,000 fully grown male turkeys will drink about 832.791 liters of water daily. This means that a single 11 kilogram turkey will drink about 0.833 liters of water in a day. If we scale this up to a 28 kilogram turkey, we could estimate that this turkey would drink 2.12 liters of water every day. So let's say that our estimate for how much water a 28 kilogram dinosaur would drink in a day is 2.12 liters of water. And finally, to know the total amount of water that every dinosaur in the world drank in a day, we just need to know the average dinosaur population. It's impossible. I'm not even joking. We don't even know how many species of dinosaurs existed, let alone what the population was. And we don't have any way of knowing how many dinosaur species didn't get fossilized at all. So there are dinosaurs that we'll never know even existed. Since up until this point we've been comparing dinosaurs to birds, then let's go with Anna Luz Porzikonski's bird population estimation and say that there's 400 billion dinosaurs alive at any given point in the Mesozoic era. I'm going with the highest number in Porzikonski's estimation because there were no humans alive during the Mesozoic era, and also no deforestation. So 400 billion dinosaurs, each drinking 2.12 liters of water every day, means that the dinosaurs drank about 848 billion liters of water per day. And with that, we have the value of P to solve our dipsy. And our final equation after filling in all the numbers is the sum from n equals 0 to 67,936,499,999 of 0.0000001 of 0.9999999999932698428 times 0.9999999992698428 to the nth power. And thank goodness we don't have to replace n and add 68 billion different numbers together because we have an equation to solve this. Thank you, Khan Academy. This equation is known as the geometric sum equation, and it goes like this. The sum from n equals 0 to x of a times r to the nth power is equal to a times 1 minus r to the x plus 1 power all divided by 1 minus r. So if we plug our numbers into the geometric sum and solve for it, we'll get the percentage of water that's dinosaur pee. And the final result is... <laughs> 100%. <sighs> oh, well, that can't be right. The only factor I could think of that I didn't account for that would affect this outcome is the fact that dinosaurs only drank fresh water. This whole time we've been assuming that all water had an equal chance of being drunken by a dinosaur, when really only a small percentage of water is accessible to dinosaurs at any time. So I created a new scenario where you have F, which represents the world's fresh water supply, and S, which represents the world's salt water supply. Then we also have T, which is the amount of water that's traded between the two sources of water daily, assuming the fresh water supply and the salt water supply are at equilibrium. Today, about 540 cubic kilometers of water is discharged into the ocean each year, an 18% increase since 1994. So I rounded it and took 20% off this number to get 432 cubic kilometers of water per year, which is equal to 432 trillion liters of fresh water going into the ocean each year. Divide this by 365.25 and we get 1,182,751,540,041.068 liters of water per day. This is going to be our estimated value of T. Let's start with what happens to S, the salt water. Each turn, we take T amount of water out of S. This is the evaporated water that will go into the fresh water supply. Even though there's less water in S, theoretically the percentage of dinosaur pee in S stays the same. But then you have to add T amount of water from the fresh water supply. This can come from stuff like rivers running off into the ocean. This new water coming into the ocean is theoretically going to have the same percentage of dinosaur pee that the fresh water supply had. So we have to do a weighted average between the percentage of dinosaur pee in the ocean and the percentage of dinosaur pee in the water that's coming into the ocean. This gives us the following equation. 
where SP is the new percentage of dinosaur pee in salt water, SW is the amount of water that is salt water, SP-1 is what the percentage of dinosaur pee in salt water was before the turn started, and FP-1 is what the percentage of dinosaur pee in fresh water was before the turn started. Then to calculate the percentage of fresh water that's dinosaur pee after each turn, we start with pretty much the same equation, but replace all the fresh water and salt water variables. Then we have to take into account that dinosaurs are taking a portion of fresh water out and replacing it with 100% dinosaur pee. We have to add that to our equation, where DW is the amount of water that dinosaurs drink per day, to get this new equation to calculate the percent of dinosaur pee in fresh water. And finally, ZP, the final percent of dinosaur pee in all the water in all the world, is going to be FW times FP plus SW times SP, all divided by FW plus SW. Or we could expand the whole equation out like this, but then it looks like my next Halloween mask. So I made a computer program to calculate this equation, link in the description in case you'd like to check it out. Then I plugged the points into a curve finding program to see where the curve is after 67,936,499,999 days. And this gives us... pretty much 100%. Well shoot, I don't see any factors I could add to be more accurate. We did the math two different ways and got the same answer. So I guess that's it then. Now you can tell your friends that all the water in the world is about 100% dinosaur pee, from the water we drink to the clouds in the sky. Also, that would make us about 60% dinosaur pee. That's actually kind of cool. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to take a nice warm dino pee shower after all this. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye! I came out with nothing that models this model. Blah, model this model game, model this model game, blah, it's like a tongue twister. Mo model this model game, model this model game, Model this marble game. 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 Hey, hey, hey. But came out with nothing that model this marble game.